it says I'm live. Am I live? Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, really nervous. Don't know why. I'm used to talking to myself all the time. Um, welcome to my shop. Although it's not really a shop anymore. It's just a fancy room with too much stuff in it. Feeling quite sad, actually, because I haven't really spent much time in the shop in the last um, couple of weeks just because it's all a bit stressful and finding it a little bit upsetting um missing my shop missing my customers missing my lifestyle basically so um we'll say hello to a few people because i've seen there's quite a few people watching um oh hello zaheer hello edward hello jeanette oh and other jeanette <laughs> you can decide which one's Jeanette and which one's other Jeanette. Um, and Lex and Simply Dana. I don't think I know Simply Dana. And Andrea and um, Cajun Reset. I'm going to have to check out these names. Geordie Grandma, Chris Tyler, John McCown, and Lauren, deep end of the sandbox. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Tommy. Um, yeah, so I'm feeling a little bit sad because um, my shop is shut and has been shut for a couple of weeks already. Um, and I just don't know when I'm going to be able to open again. Um, missing it, missing it a lot. Um, but it'll all be here when it's all over. It'll still be here, won't it? I'll just have to start building up my customer base all over again. Um, the etsy wise i've decided to put my etsy shop on holiday mode i know that a lot of you are still reselling but i decided that um i was going to close down my etsy shop for a little while till the worst of it's over and then um pick it up again later on and see about five six weeks time maybe hi karen hi kelly um and victoria <laughs> um yeah, so I can't really talk a lot about reselling. I had three orders that went out the other day. There were books, old books. There was a nice uh, hymn book and common prayer and a little leather bound. That was nice and a, a needle craft book. But um, yeah, from now on, it's just down to staying at home and cooking, keeping myself busy. We're all going to be the size of houses by the time it's all over because I like to cook. <laughs> I'm going to come back to Etsy. Yeah, I mean, I've got. I'm coming back to the shop, you know, I've got all this stuff, I've got to sell it somehow. Um, just need to find stuff to keep me busy in the meantime. Um, oh, hi, Lainey. Hi, Indy. Uh, yeah, just missing it. I don't know if everybody else, I, I think everybody else seems to be carrying on just with their online stuff. And I know I could do the same, but I'm, um, oh, it's really freaked me out, this whole thing. And because we've all decided as a family, you know, the three children who are all pretty much adults and me and my husband have decided to stay in. It kind of defeats the object if I'm then going out to the post office and posting and stuff. So if we're going to do it full on, I might as well stay in. So, yeah, got to find other things to keep me busy. So I'm thinking that maybe I'll do some listing on Etsy and save them as drafts to set up when it's all over. Yeah, everybody's really busy. <laughs> Everybody seems to be really busy except for me. I mean, I'm keeping myself busy with cooking and a bit more cooking. But yeah, so my shop, I would give you a little tour, but it's an absolute tip because we've been using it as like a decontamination zone. So as you come in, everybody takes their shoes and their coats and everything and dumps them in here. So it looks like cross between shoe zone and I don't know, some cloakroom. Um, I've taken stuff out of the window, some jewellery and things out of the window because I didn't want all the, because it's like on felt, you know, these sort of things. So pretty necklace. But I just figure in the full sun, because normally I've got the blinds out all the time, in the full sun these are all going to fade. So, um, hi DBG. Um, yeah, look, how do I do this? There we go. Pretty seat necklace. I don't know how clear you can see that. But I don't want all my display things to be ruined. So I decided to take some. So even my windows don't look that great. <laughs> so, um, 
so it's made a difference to my YouTube as well because I don't have hauls to show you. I don't have what I sold to show you. I can I can show you around the shop when I've tidied up a little bit, but I'm not showing you it in the state it's in now. Um, yeah, so if there's anything that anybody wants to see in my YouTube over the next few weeks, give me some ideas um, because I'm at a bit of a loss, if I'm honest. Um, all right, so what's Misty saying? Misty says, have a live sale. Mine are selling out each week. Well, that's a good idea, apart from I'm not posting at the moment. This is the whole issue, really. Um, I don't want, unless people were happy to wait, you know, if people want to buy it and then wait or reserve it and then wait until this is all over a little bit. But um, I'm thinking that at the end of April, I'm going to make a decision again. Um, I've made that decision yesterday. The thing is, I get really stressed. I went to the post office to post these three Etsy orders. Pathetic, I know. And I could feel myself getting really tense and worried about anybody coming anywhere near me. And and just like, it's not the thought of getting it myself, it's the thought of passing it to other people that frightens me to death. So, yeah. So this place is going to get a really deep clean before I reopen, that's for sure. Um, if anybody wants to see a tour of the shop, there are some in my previous videos, but I will do more in the future. Um, yeah, I could do a giveaway. Yeah, that, that's my, quite a good idea. But um, yeah, I can I can send mail out. I could go to the post office, but it's just I don't I just don't feel I don't feel it at the moment. I think that it's all got a little bit much. So I am. Um, keeping it to a, my outings to a minimum. I went to Sainsbury's the other night and oh my Lord, it was like a military operation. And when I came back, I was like straight in the shower, all my clothes went in the wash and the kids were wiping everything off to put it away. And yeah, just don't really want to go down that route every time I need to post. So I and I understand everybody, everybody's different on there. Everybody's uh, getting on with things differently. And I think a lot of people are doing really well. And then that makes me feel guilty. It makes me feel like I should be doing it. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm going to reassess it in a few weeks' time, see if I can um, do it. The problem with getting collection from Hermes is my shop front, I'm not like a, like a normal house. So my shop front is literally my shop doorway. So if I left stuff out there, anybody walking past could pick it up so um i'd have to be there to do it and then you've got that whole collecting interaction thing so um it sort of leaves the same same dilemma really so as i say i've made the decision now that i'm not going to do it for the next few weeks and then i'll reassess it again at the end of april and see where i am then Rust reloaded. My husband has refused to go out with me to the supermarket now. I get so stressed. You can be as careful as you like yourself, but you can't legislate for other people's stupidity. Yeah, exactly. But as I said before, it's not about me getting ill. It's about me passing it on to my family and to other people. Because where I live, this little town, it's pretty little Devon village. You'll have seen in my vlogs. Um, it's a lot of older people, a lot of predominantly older people. And, and they all think that they're invincible don't they we got through the war and all <laughs> and it scares me to death that I could pass it on to somebody you know my some of my really dear customers um so yeah I went to Sainsbury's this morning near the checkout they had four baskets full of bread on yellow label what a waste yeah I went to Sainsbury's I, I timed it because I can literally look out of my back window over Sainsbury's car park so I kept looking to see when the car park was empty and try timed it so it was as empty as possible so um yeah it wasn't too bad although they didn't have everything that I wanted I got a lot of stuff and we've managed to get fruit and veg delivery from a local shop and my husband's just organized getting milk delivered so they're going to deliver milk butter bread I think as well and eggs so yeah and we can get the butcher to deliver meat so it's all going good really <laughs> I don't need to ever go out again and I baked bread today, so um, I can't say it was perfect, but um, it was edible apparently because <laughs> I don't eat it. <laughs> right. You go at seven in the morning, too scared to go later at the moment. What's the post office or to the shops? Um, yeah, I, uh, it's, it's all just a strange world. I, I really hope that when we come out the other end of this, 
that we're all going to appreciate everything so much more. I know I am. I'm going to appreciate my town so much more. I miss my um, morning routine. I'd go every morning. I would go to Sainsbury's and I knew quite a, quite a lot of the staff in there. So I'd have a chat with whoever was serving me. And then I'd go to the fruit and veg shop and talk to them. And then I'd go in the butchers and talk with them in the hardware shop. I'd pop in and say hello. And and I've not seen these people for weeks, you know, because before I before I shut, I had a week working at my husband's shop. So I haven't seen anybody for such a long time. And I feel a little bit cut off. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's going to get better. Get used to it. I'm sure. Yeah, I managed to get some flour just before like the proper sort of lockdown in one of the local shops. I got some flour and yeast, so um, I was prepared. So, and my husband made chapatis as well when he made a curry the other night, which was impressive. Um, I went to the grocery store yesterday, wore gloves and a construction mask. I had it at the shop. It's funny that no one even gave me a second look. I know the world has changed. You're right, Miss D. It's completely changed. Um, I just really feel for people who have to go, who haven't got a choice, you know. Um, but then maybe, would you just get on with it if you have to? I don't know. Mm. I think maybe if I was forced into it, I would have a different attitude. I'd just sort of be like, well, this is my job. This is what I have to do. Um, but when you've got to make that choice, it's like, oh. yeah, WhatsApp's great, isn't it? WhatsApp and Facebook and my mum and bless her heart she's in her 80s and we talk on FaceTime and she said oh I like it apart from I mostly see her forehead because she holds it at that angle but she does like being able to see my face as we're talking so that's that's good um well shall I show you some of my jewelry that I took out the window Lex Lex are you listening <laughs> is she gone <laughs> Um, I've got some bits of jewellery that I thought I would take the brooches and things. I've got some pretty ones. Um, I'm not the ball. I've got some lovely clip-on earrings. I've got this stand here, which I use to display some clip-on earrings in the window. Um, I'm not very good at this positioning thing. But surprisingly enough... Um, to me, they look very 80s, you know, dynasty and all that. But I actually sell very well. But maybe that's because my customer base is a little bit older. Um, but, yeah, that sort of thing goes really well. I've got I've got more backup in the shop, but that's the one I use to display them in the window. Um, I've got various. I use these trays in the window to display my uh, brooches. So there's got like blue felt in there to show them off better. Um, I've got this nice one. You see, I haven't done a little research in advance because I can't remember what make this is, but Lex might recognize it. It's like two tones. So there's a gold tone. It's almost like a rosy gold color. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. Um, and then silver tone with little marker seats in there. And it is signed, but I can't remember now offhand what mark that is and then i've got some of these little micro mosaic ones um get the hang of this in a minute you see that i love these micro mosaic brooches i think they're amazing just the patience that would go into making something like that is incredible here's a little silver brooch with looks like a greyhound and then a crown so maybe that's um Ooh, does anybody see that? Anybody got any idea what that would be for? So, yeah, it looks like a greyhound with a crown above it. I should maybe give it a clean because I think when I cleaned it last time it looked good and now it's started to tarnish since I've had it a little while. I don't know. Can you see that? Maybe I need to get my... My son tried to put a better... Um, webcam that's the word <laughs> but it wouldn't clip to the top of my laptop here's another signed one this is a pretty one um, gold tone flowers sort of brushed brushed would you call that yeah i don't know see i'm good with all the um keywords 
But when you put it in the window, it sells itself. You don't need your keywords. This is, this is the thing. I'm not so good on the internet. I like making a pretty display and things selling themselves. <laughs> Here we go. Here's another gold tone one. See, I need to watch all Lex's videos and then start writing down all my keywords for the jewellery bits. Some of these brooches I find really, really pretty. The older ones, and sometimes they're a little bit damaged, like this is a really pretty little wreath one. Oh, hang on. Can you see? But it's got one little stone missing. Useless at this. Oh, wrong way, that way. But to me, that is just gorgeous. It's so delicate. And now this one's a bit odd, but I know... I know the provenance of this one. <laughs> this is Studio Pottery. And this was actually made by um, my mum's cousin. Yeah, my mum's cousin in East Germany uh, before the wall came down. So that's a whole while ago now. Um, but it is takes, you know, it's not everybody's taste, is it? Um, it's not mine. That's why I'm selling it. <laughs> Don't, don't tell mum. I got some more pretty brooches. These Celtic ones are quite popular. The, the sort of Celtic thistle, that kind of thing. Um, or if you like a bit of kitsch. Little Scotty dog, do you think? Um, they vary. You know, they start at four pounds. Um, so like this tray here, well, no, I'm not going to be able to show you, the one with the Scotty dog and the Celtic one, they're £10 each. There's another, tr the first tray that I showed you, the, they're £4 each. And then I've got some individually priced that I sell. Um, yeah, don't, let's, shh, don't. <laughs> some of these are individually priced and like that one's 28 Um so they really, really vary from four pounds up to 30, 40 quid. This one's nice. It's got those um, sort of petrolly looking uh, Aurora or what's it, Borealis or whatever they're called. Um, but look how it sparkles. Yeah, so they vary in prices. Um, but the great thing is I don't need to do the whole keyword thing. I can literally just put them in the window. And it's surprising how well brooches sell, actually. Um, here's some proper bling. Look at this one. Now, that is a monster. It's huge. I mean, look. It's enormous. Yeah, it's not my cup of tea. But um, I'm sure it's not signed, so... Um, it's difficult to get a proper value for those sort of things. That's a pretty one with the the green stone. Oh, I'll get the hang of this camera thing in a minute. Green stones and the brushed gold. That's really pretty. Now this one I really, really, really like. But again, I don't know if it's a lot of people's cup of tea. It's a wooden one. And... I don't know, it looks sort of art deco to me. But it is quite big again. I'm not, I'm not a brooch person, really. Only because I'm so clumsy that I just catch things on everything. This is another sort of very blingy, unusual one. You see that? So the bluey, greeny stones. And then it looks like it's got little horseshoes there going up round the crescent shape and I think that one is signed but at the moment I can't see and I haven't got my loop thing so so yeah there's a whole variety it's an enamel one there with little fuchsias on so I've got all those there's more but you know don't want to bore you with my brooches um i've got loads i went a bit crazy at one point with cufflinks so i've got a whole shelf in one of my cabinets just full of 
cufflinks and they seem to go near Christmas they go quite well and if I'm hoping in time for June maybe Father's Day they might go summer season for weddings that kind of thing um but I find that uh, with cufflinks you don't sell any unless you've got some in the window if you've got a display in the window then people will come in and ask for more so I've got a little tray that I put in the window um and they're just your standard sort of Stratton ones like these are gold plated oh. you see those I'm going to get the hang of this showing you on the camera thing um I've got some stainless steel ones they're classic those and some of these things I've got listed in my Etsy shop um as well so what I do is if I've listed it on Etsy, I put a little E on the label so that I know that when I sell it, I need to take it off my Etsy listings. Um, I've got like literally hundreds, not hundreds, but stacks of um, cufflinks. So there's a few more. I'm loving that wall pocket to your left on the wall my left oh yeah that one yes yeah, sorry yeah studio pottery one it's pretty isn't it yeah very nice and this this section here hang on if i turn my laptop around a bit is my sort of eclectic mix of things um if you've seen my vlogs before I, you'll see that i have a kind of system although somebody told me the other day that i shouldn't have a system but hey um so I tend to have glassware together, I have um, china together, I have um, plates together, LPs, books, and I keep them in separate sections. And then this section here is the everything else sort of section. And then I've got some locked cabinets with some jewellery in and some locked cabinets with some other bits of silver and things in. But I went in a different antique shop, um, or vintage shop, a few weeks ago and she said I don't think you should have it in sections because when somebody comes in for a specific thing they won't get tempted by other stuff so you should have it more mixed but I kind of like it the way I do it so we are each individuals and I'm just gonna do what I want to do because I'm too long in the tooth to do anything else uh, Lex, how's sales on your jewellery going? Mine pretty slow, are the stuff selling well? How are your sales going, Lex? Yeah, never listen to people. Yeah, people are just, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm just going to do my own thing. I decided that at the beginning of the year, that I was just going to do my own thing and stop worrying about anybody else. And um, let's see how that works out for me. <laughs> so this year... Um, I'm finding it really, this is what I'm finding really difficult. Shall I take these off now? No, because then I can't see the chat. Um, yeah, this is what I'm finding really difficult because in January I was really hyped up and ready for the year and had got a list of things that I wanted to achieve and wanted to do. And although I had slowed a little bit, I felt like um, I was getting somewhere and then all of a sudden it's like somebody's taken out the rug from under me. So I kind of like need to regroup and work out what I'm going to do next. Um, yeah, so it's sort of changed everything, really. I mean, it hasn't. Ultimately, I've got the shop and I want it to do well. And um, I've got my Etsy and I'll build on that. I'm definitely going to build on the um, Etsy this year um, because shop sales have been last year were just, I don't know, a little bit unpredictable. I really expected um, December to be good. It was really disappointing. So um, I'm going to concentrate on building up my Etsy ready for December next year. So, um, <laughs> oh, thanks, Simply Dana. Yeah, I've got hand sanitizer everywhere. And my son, every time we go out, he sort of glares at you. Have you washed your hands? Have you taken your coat off? Have you changed your shoes? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this year I really want to build up my Etsy. I don't know about eBay because I've never been a big fan, so I don't know. 
Edward keeps telling me that I should get on eBay and sell more on eBay, but um, Etsy suits me and my shop, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although last night I had all these ideas buzzing around in my head and I, I didn't have a piece of paper, so I couldn't write anything down. When I woke up this morning, I couldn't remember any of them. So um, that wasn't all that helpful. Um, shall I show you something of the random shelves? I know, Edward. Yeah, I know. You're doing really, really well. I, I'm not doing anything in the next few weeks. So, I, yeah, I could I could do all. I know I can still. And most of my Etsy stuff is small. Um, there's a lot of books and um, jewellery and things like that. So most, most of my Etsy stuff is small stuff that I could do anyway. But it's... Uh, it's just not worth the stress that it causes me at the moment. And I'm thinking that at the end of April, when maybe I'm either used to it or things have calmed down or whatever, then I can redo it then. Let's see some random things then. Okay, here we go. Oh, these are funny. Like, I may have shown these in one of my videos years ago because I've had them quite a while. But. These are Drioli bottles, which would have had, I think, brandy inside them. Yeah, cherry brandy. And so um, there's the stopper there. So little ceramic bottles, and people collect them. So this is a guy with a, I don't know what he's, I don't know what he's doing, but he's got a turban on. And um, so he's a less interesting one. <laughs> These two are funny. So this one, he's a chap hanging on a lamp post but he's got the can can ladies can i make it move can you see i think that's pretty cool and then this one's a little bit risky avert your son's eyes lauren <laughs> oh cheeky <laughs> um yeah so those are my drioli bottles um, and I've only got let's see, a tenner each on those, so um, it's not not big monies. Oh, that's the thing. I know, like Edward's shop is full of stuff that's worth like hundreds of pounds. My shop things start at fifty p, literally, because when I get a mixed job from the auction, I don't want to throw anything away, so I will sell it off like cheap cheap as you get. Look, I've even got a. You see, did you know what this is? Let me cover the label up. Do you know what that is? Hold on, my label thing's getting in the way. Can you see what it is? Does anybody know what that is? It's um, a D-lock for an army kit bag. You see, you get the most random things when you go to the auction. Uh, what else have I got? I've got a kangaroo. Anyone for a kangaroo? Um, I love games. I've got loads of games on my Etsy shop, sort of card games and things, these old ones. So this is a Waddington's Lexicon game, um, which I have got on at eight, eight pounds. So it's just a basic uh, letter game. Not exactly sure how you play it, but, um, and there's even got the rules in that. So things like that is the sort of thing you find in my shop. I've got, A bit of jade. Um, oh, I love paper mache boxes. Does anybody else love paper mache boxes? I've got like a, a collection of lots of paper mache boxes. This one's very pretty, but I prefer the sort of cashmere ones. The yeah, you'll have seen those in other videos. This is a nice teapot. So it's brass, and then it's got this silver overlay. Can you? Sorry, I'm rubbish at this camera work. I'm going to have to practice on that. It's really pretty. Don't know how practical, but um, yeah, love that. Um, I've got a ship's compass, <laughs> um, teddy bears. What else? I've got some nice books actually. Um, 
beautiful Marilyn Monroe book, big heavy one, which I will not be posting because I'm not messing about with that kind of thing. Um, but beautiful old black and white photos of Marilyn Monroe. And a Playboy one, Bridget Bardot one, that kind of thing. And then I've got practical things for people's houses, like stoneware jars. And um, ooh, I don't know how practical this is, but a big brass, uh, like pouring pan. Who remembers this? My mum always used to have this in the bathroom. I don't know why, but I don't think anybody used it. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people come in the shop and they go, oh, I remember that. So I think maybe it's everybody's mum had one, had some at some time. Um, okay, the shop, we've had it for um, 15 years. We've had the shop, we bought it originally as a news agents and we ran it as a news agents until about seven years ago when they built the huge Sainsbury's out behind us. And um, that basically, it, it killed the trade because next door to us was a little mini supermarket. And so we used to get the footfall from there coming in here. So when the footfall to there died, our footfall died at the same time. So we changed it into an art shop selling art materials because we already had two or three other shops selling art materials. So we changed it into that selling art materials, cards, stationery, that kind of thing. And then um, in the meantime, I'd started selling on Etsy and in antique centers. And I had about three different booths in antique centers. So we decided to um, take the art stuff out of here and change it into my shop. And I've had it for about a year and a half now as this, you know, the antique thing. It's, it's, it was saving me rent, renting out spaces in antique centres. And um, it also sounds really awful, but it saved us staff because I was having to go to antique centres and do all that. While we were, Meanwhile, we were paying staff to be here running the art shop. So... Um, we meant that I could be here working full time here and then um yeah so we didn't have the responsibility of staff so um I'm very grateful for that because it just makes life a lot easier I mean we had great staff um got on really well with them and they were always really reliable but you still feel that sense of responsibility so it's uh, it's rich much simpler now question let's have a look what's your favorite thing you have in your shop right now um, oh god, that's too difficult to pick one thing. Um, I've got lots of things. I, I mean, I really love on, let's see. some of these things in this cabinet behind me. If I just pick out a few, because I just I love my whole shop and I love the things in it, and I'm missing it so much. <laughs> this is pretty. It's a little hand mirror, but with enameled back, painted with birds, sort of Chinese style. And then this feels like a um, jade sort of stone handle. It's just a little hand mirror. So that's really pretty. Um, I love things like this. I always look out for things like this at car boots. Um, sorry, I'm rubbish with the camera. Um, so it's got the little embroidery front and inside it's a little sewing kit. You can see all that. Really pretty. And things like that are ideal for Etsy as well. So I have things like that on sale in Etsy. And then this is an old, um, like a cotton reel box. So the cotton, sewing cotton would go in here and then it would, um, what's the word? Thread. <laughs> Thread through the little hole and, um, and then you can just pull it out. It's clever, isn't it? So um, Clark & Co, Anchor Sewing Cottons. And it's got this, I don't know if you can pick out that design. So it's paper mache with the little design of, there's baskets and cotton reels and things like that on there. So it's really, really pretty. Um, yeah, and I showed on, um, I did a live with Edward recently I can't get to it right now because I'm stuck where I'm sitting but um beautiful Indonesian carving that I've got um 
that I am going to take upstairs so I can enjoy it in the meantime. But I love a bit of kitsch and um, I'm always on the lookout for the unusual. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else on my shelves I can show you, but a bit difficult, a bit far away for me to reach. Um, what else is in my cabinet? Oh, these are nice. Only silver plated, but um, serving spoons. All in or engraved or whatever you want to call it and on that one and then they've got these unusual ends so they're really pretty I mean the silver plate is worn a little bit there but that doesn't bother me still still really really pretty 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 I find that um some things I, I mean, I do buy stuff that I know will sell. There's certain things that I always look out for. Things like the galvanized steel milk churns um, are really popular. People use them as planters. We've got some as planters in our backyard. And um, Port Merion, the uh, botanic gardens, vases and stuff like that are really popular. Bezic figures, so especially if you can get the Bezic horses, that kind of thing, popular. Um, but I just like the unusual. Unfortunately, not everybody's taste is the same as mine. Has anybody got any questions? Um, I remember when I remember one of your videos when you showed us around one of your booths. Yeah, that was a while ago now. Would you think about doing a YouTube auction? Although you'd still need to post. Yeah, you see, I definitely would think. I'd already thought about doing it before all this happened. Um, I definitely do a, a YouTube auction um, and maybe that's something I can do when I start to restart my um, posting again maybe at the end of the month I'll think about doing that but is it best do you think to do it as a theme so to pick out a particular theme for that auction or just to do a random selection of things and I don't know whether I've got enough subscribers to make an auction worthwhile hmm. Lex, is this your dream job? It is my dream job. I absolutely love this job. I've always worked in retail and I love interacting with customers, but this is really sort of gets my attention and, and it's stuff that I love. So yeah, I love it. Um, I discovered Antique Noritaki Chana does really well for me. Cool. Uh, question, what's the beige thing hanging up next to the yellow oil lamp? Oh, uh, shoe stretchers, you know, the wooden shoe stretchers. Um, I'm a bit trapped in, so I can't get to it very very easily now. But um, what's the one vintage thing that would really like another junk to send you from the US? <laughs> uh, oh, I mean, if you saw some nodders, I'm a bit partial to nodders. I was telling Edward that the other day. So I'm on the lookout for nodders. Um, but... Um, they're not that easy to find. I, I'm not finding that they're easy to find. We could do a live auction together. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Although you've got all the keywords, you'll be selling it, and I'll be going, this is a pretty thing that looks pretty. <laughs> and you'd be saying, it's the brutalist modern whatever. Yeah, you see, I'm good at it. Good at the keywords. Yeah, so I don't know. It, Maybe if I start with an auction on something small so that when I restart posting, I can do it on a on the small scale. Don't know. Um, has anybody got any other questions or maybe I'll start winding up because I feel like I'm just prattling on and um, I don't want to bore everybody stupid. <laughs> yeah, just hold it up. That that works for me. That's why I like shop windows, because it's ideal. <laughs> you don't have to sell anything. It's when people start asking me about the history of things, I just say, oh, I don't know. I bought it in an auction. I liked it. I need to get more knowledgeable. And what I need to do is I need to get the knowledge, Edward's knowledge in here somewhere. But um, it's not happening yet. Luckily, I've managed to get away with just, you know, buying the pretties. 
and finding people who like the pretty things. <laughs> When's my next live? Blimey, I haven't even finished this one yet. Let the stress levels like go down a bit and then, then we'll work it out. <laughs> um, you're going great. Oh, thank you, Jeanette. Um, what's for tea? Oh, it's my regular easy curry. So instead of prawns, I'm doing fish. So it's fish, curry paste, um, cream, spinach, peas, and uh, cauliflower rice for me. Rice for the regulars, a bit of naan bread. And um, yeah, and then tomorrow, veggie chili. See, I'm planning ahead. I've, if you ask me about food, I could probably talk for another half an hour. <laughs> I'd love for you to join in my live video at 7 p.m. What time would that be? Oh, I don't know. That's maths, isn't it? Anybody good at maths? Don't know. Sounds late, though. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could do a guess the price quiz. Yes, we could do a guess the price quiz. Only you do have to bear in mind that I pick a number out of the air sometimes when it comes to picking the price. There isn't always the um, lost for words, the great amount of knowledge into it. It's just a kind of like, how much do I think this is worth? Add a quid on. That's the thing I've found with the shop is I have to put extra pounds on because people want to knock you down. They've all been watching Antiques Road Trip and all that and it gets a bit tedious sometimes but um yeah so I sometimes have to put a bit on to be able to knock a bit off so I wish I could just put the price on that I want and then they could see what it is and job done but unfortunately that's not how the trade works I have an idea for you for a film for you hun I do a quiz what's the item so you can pick 10 items out of your shop and play a game who can guess what it is Oh, what, so find something unusual and then they have to try and work out what it is. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Sue, this is a lovely live, Kirsten, thank you. Anytime you feel like sharing, you should. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> no, I'm no good at maths either, Misty. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I skipped past that, Karen. Paella sounds lovely. I know, people, Lex, honestly, life would be so much simpler, wouldn't it? No, no, because I really miss the people, to be fair. I've got an old chap who comes in every Thursday, and um, I'm really worried about him because he lives on his own. He lives out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know where he lives. I don't know his phone number, so I can't check on him. I don't even know his name. He just comes in every Thursday, and we have a chat about how his hip's hurting and what he's bought recently and what he's found at the auction. And and usually I know what things he's looking out for. So he'll say, have you got anything new? And I'll show him and he often buys them. And yeah, I really miss those little conversations. Hi, Andrew. Uh, still would if I could anywhere. Does vegan paella. Well, surely vegan paella isn't that difficult. Can't you make it yourself? I would have thought. Um... Yes, I've done it. Feedback went well. It was simple. Ten items. You know what they are, but already and make your viewers guess. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, corn one, I would have thought. That smoked corn that I got from Sainsbury's that I put in a curry recently, that was really nice. So I'd try that. Um, what, whose name is Roger Thursday? Sorry, missed that. Don't understand. I know, yeah. And and the thing is with my shop is I get regulars who come in. They might only come in every two or three weeks. But after a year, you really feel like you got to know them. And then suddenly you've got no contact with them. And then you realize that you don't really know them at all. But you've had all these little snippets of conversations. And miss it. I really do miss miss them and I worry about you know because quite a lot of my customers are older um you know one of my customers I put a chair this chair that I'm sitting in actually now it's a nice comfy one and I put it outside every day so that when she walks down and she gets tired halfway down she can have a sit on the chair outside and then I'll go outside and have a chat with her and then she'll carry on on the way shopping and I know her husband's really ill he was having treatment for cancer so I'm hoping that they're all right but miss miss all that Really do. Lots of corn isn't vegan. Oh, isn't it? 
Oh. I'm off to look up ideas for paella now. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck with that. Um, I want that red coat. Yeah, it's actually um, like it was Royal Engineers. Is that what they're called? Anyway, yeah. You see, I'm good with history. Um, it's actually bigger than you think. It doesn't look that big, but it was obviously made for somebody because they're cropped, aren't they? For somebody who's really broad, like muscly, big chap. Because when people have tried it on, they don't don't look right in it, and it's also moth eaten. So, <laughs> um, yes. If you find a vegan recipe for paella, I'll, I'm all up for seeing that because I do like a recipe. Um, what are you cooking, Lex, tonight? Anything exciting? Oh, it's gone quiet. <gasps> da, da, da. Shall I have a look what's on my shelf before I go? The random shelves. Um. little dish with a hot air balloon um, one of the things I'm sick of the sight of is little brass bells I don't know every auction lot you get seems to have at least one brass bell as a lady on it these are quite cute little little candlesticks got two of those the sweet little things Oh, I love olives. Bit of kale. <laughs> you got kale in the post. Oh. <laughs> oh, you people feeling sorry for you in your kale addiction. You see, I could make do with spinach. I do like a bit of kale, but spinach. And I had some really nice cabbage, but because it came in my veg box, I don't know what sort of cabbage it was, but it was a proper like green, strong tasting thing. Really nice with a bit of butter and garlic mm. and the fennel fennel came in the in the veg box and I've never cooked fennel before and to be fair when we um before we moved down here we used to have a really big garden up in Lincolnshire and um fennel used to grow wild it was like weeds and I hated the stuff because it literally seeds itself all over your garden and then when you're trying to pull it up the roots don't come up you just get all the fennel-y bit in your hands and then you smell of aniseed it used to drive me insane, so I've never never been that big a fan. But it came in my veg box, so I thought I've got to use it. So yesterday, sliced it up really thin in the frying pan with butter and olive oil, and then like caramelized it. Mm, it was nice. Hello, Nick or Andrea. I think I'm assuming that's Nick. <laughs> um, I've got one of those bells. I use it to get my husband's attention when he's using headphones. I used to shout, but the dog barks when anyone shouts. Thank goodness for auction brass bell, baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have my husband. Usually I'll go, dinner's ready, and then he shouts with his boomy voice to get the kids to come for dinner. I have got a big gong, actually, um, that I got not that long ago, and I did say, shall I bring this up so we don't have to shout anymore? Um... What's wrong with you girls? There is no sugar in kale or spinach. Lol, cakes, yum. No, we don't eat the sugars, do we, Lex? We avoid the sugars. Um, although if you saw my latest vlog, you'd have seen my massive bowl of, like, waffly thing with yogurt and fruit and cream, so it wasn't all that healthy. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go because I feel like I'm saying, um... A little bit too much. And um, although I feel guilty now because Nick's just arrived. And so um, I feel like I should draw it out a bit because the master has the master has uh, joined us. How about this one? Do you like it? For some reason, somebody thought I'll make a little brass motorbike man on a motorbike and shove a corkscrew in his back seat since the lockdown i've put on two stone well give up the sugar edward it's simples <laughs> um i blame the biscuits the i blame the biscuits for putting weight on so i don't i don't eat biscuits 
I've actually lost weight since lockdown, which um, I know seems hard to believe, but the stress, I think, <laughs> for another hour. I haven't got enough to say. This is the problem. I'm trying to look for random stuff to see. You see, if you wanted a giraffe, if you came in my shop, you'd find a giraffe. In fact, I've got a camel customer. He comes regularly, he comes every couple of months and says, have you got any new camels? Oh, um, so I always look out for camels. Um, I'm eating way too much chocolate. Uh, in his back, expected you to say something else. Don't know what that means. Uh, do you have a fridge lock I can buy? <laughs> it's called willpower, Edward. Willpower. <laughs> You fill up on veg and then you don't feel hungry. You can't eat the, the chocolates. Yeah, a camel customer. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, yeah. There's people of all sorts, isn't there? Yeah. If only I could have a Drioli customer or a brass kettle customer as well. I got teddy bears. I got all sorts. Can you see up there? No. Butters. Um things yeah i think i'm gonna have to go because i'm feel like i'm rattling on thank you very much for joining me i hope that i haven't prattled too fast i feel like i'm going at 100 miles an hour um i will see you all soon really appreciate your support and um thank you very much take care bye